uh, he uses the word a lot, symptoms, which is true. And one of the things I was hoping he was going to share was uh, how backsliding is a sickness. And the reason I say that is because of the word of God that says he will heal our backsliding. There's a scripture in Isaiah chapter 6. I like how he started emphasizing that backsliding, uh, the symptom of that or the root cause of that, how he said, was disobedience. And in Hosea chapter 6, he says, come, in verse 1, let us return to the Lord. That takes care of the backsliding. That takes care of the disobedience. Let us return to the Lord. Had Jonah said that halfway to Tarshish, he would have saved himself a lot of trouble. And a lot of us need to start saving ourselves a lot of trouble. We need to look ahead and see what it is God is trying to spare us from. Yes. He's trying to spare us from some of the turmoil. We open the door. Right. Our curiosity or our shrugging off. Oh, no, God is not going to deal with me on that. I got a little bit of ways with him. I can get away with just a little bit. Because we know the grace of God. Yeah. And that's become a dangerous place for a lot of us that know better. Because we've matured past that stage. Verse 1, chapter 6, Come and let us return to the Lord, for He has torn us so that He may heal us. He has stricken so that He may bind us up. You know that word torn? That's, that's a soulish area of tearing. Have you ever felt like you've just been torn? Your, your heart is torn between two, two different situations. You know, whether you should continue uh, standing for somebody not that you're not standing for them, but that you're so visibly standing for them. A lot of people think, oh, I can just uh, call so-and-so. They're going to pray for me. You know, they're not going to let me go. They're holding on to me in intercession. And yes, we are. But there comes a time when you just got to even not completely let go of them, but you've got to let them understand that you're you really going to turn them over to the Lord. You're going to lay some people on the altar before the Lord, and you're going to allow them the opportunity to have the fear of God instilled in them. That's where the problem is. Yes, People have lost their respect for the presence of God, a reverence for the Word of God. It's become nonchalant, our relationship with God, not so convicting and not so driven. And maybe that comes from or stems from being worn out, burned out, weariness, or just discouragement. You know, there's a lot of things going on in our family that opens the door to his discouragement alone. You know, if you look at the obvious things that are happening, you are just going to want to not even get out of bed sometimes. You're just like, why am I even going to bother? You know, you, you almost have to motivate yourself. You know, that's not, that right there for me, that triggers me to snap and say, wait a minute. If God is wanting me to intercede, if God is wanting me to... Uh, step in and, 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 and get involved, engage in a situation in prayer or in warfare, then what is it that's trying to hinder me or stop me or obstruct me or discourage me or distract me? Why so many obvious things are coming upon my, my trying to get there? You know, if my loved ones are calling for me for prayer, and I intend to go that direction. I'm trying to get there, but distraction comes in, or discouragement, or body aches, or I'm just tired, or I feel like I'm going to waste my time. They're going to listen to me anyway. And we talk ourselves out of where God is trying to lead us. Instead of blocking all of that away and start analyzing some things. Lord, you have torn some things out of my life for a reason. You want to heal it. You want to bring healing. I'll never forget when... Um, Alan and I first got saved. We were saved three weeks when the Lord tore us apart. We had been going to Lakewood for I don't know how many times. I know John Osteen had preached messages on adultery, and we were living together. So surely he wasn't talking about us. The preacher was not preaching about us because we had been together for three years. We already had a child together. Forget that we were still married to other people justifying but that conviction of God's word finds a way. It doesn't always cut right away. He deals with you and deals with you and deals with you. I'll never forget when the word of God, when it came down to it, we knew we weren't going to get away from each other and we weren't going to put God in our lives first in that. In that. And we had made too many excuses. We had already justified you know, ourselves and our situation. 
So here, sure enough, a series of events, and God rips us away from each other. The soulish relationship was torn out of our lives. We had no choice but to have to draw near to God. We had no choice but to let go of everything. We were in a situation we couldn't help each other. Me with my physical health, there was only so much he could do, and that was pray and hope. And he didn't even have a right relationship with God. If God turns away from the sinners and all that, what hope did we have except for mercy and, and God's goodness to yes, come through yes. and reign on this unjust situation? Tore him out of my life. No longer was I able to have him there or cling to him or have a man in my house, a head of my home, the father of all my kids, all my children. Yeah. Amen. I had to come to the Lord first. God will tear some people out of your lives. Mm -hmm. To get your attention and to get you where you need to be with him. He Amen. says, I have torn so that I can heal. In, our, in Hosea well, chapter 6 verse 1. Well, Why? Because he wanted us to return to the Lord. To get back to this place in our relationship that mattered. That was going to get the answered prayer. You know, I don't want to just be praying, praying, praying. I, want, I know that when I pray, God hears me. I know if God hears me, he's going to answer me. Yes. I've got things to do between now and then. I've got a part to play. I have character building. I have relationship building. I have conviction building. I want to go from always having to be disciple. I want to walk in an apostolic anointing where I can build people up, build a church up, build up ministries, build myself up on my most holy faith, the Word of God says. I don't want to always have to be taught and taught and reminded and reminded of things I should already know. And my life should be demonstrating that, he says in Hosea. Chapter 6, verse 1. Come on already. Let us get together. Return to the Lord. Get back to the place in your walk with God. Get back to the place where you are significant. Where you and your anointing on your life is significant. It is dangerous. The devil saw us on our way to Manville yesterday. Halfway down the road, my body went into a most crippling pain. Oh, yeah. And fought and fought and several times on the way. My daughter didn't know we were going, but the devil did. Several times on the way, do you want to go back? Do you want to turn back? And I'm doing it's only a 45-minute drive. You know? And at five, I'm like, nope, there's only one thing that doesn't want me there, and that's the devil himself, because I'm taking the power of God, I'm taking what I know about God and the, the anointing that's in my line concerning God to destroy yokes of bondage and set this house free. Yes. Do not believe the amount of witchcraft that was pulled out of the attic in this home. That people literally in today's day and age are still burning stuff over to Satan and, and, and territorial spirits of bondage and madness and sickness and disease. And that thing was uprooted. The atmosphere of that home has changed. Pulled out my Holy Ghost anointing oil and it was on in the name of Jesus. Pastor, I had crosses everywhere in the house. I tell you what, but the devil was gone. And his symptoms were gone. His residue was gone. The only residue left there was joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Health and healing restored. In the name of Jesus, there's enough sadness and depression in this world. Right. It's time for the devil to get a good dose of his own depression. Remind him of his future. That'll depress him. Amen. That'll sit his little self down. Mm -hmm. Remind him of his future. He's always reminding you of your past, Abara. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And chocolates and the and cumbia days. Not sister, no. Not her. <laughs> Let us return to the Lord. He has torn us for a reason. He wants to heal us the right way. He has stricken. Our lives have seemed stricken in some ways. Haven't you just felt like somebody just came and slammed up into your life and messed everything up? Yeah. The Lord wants to Amen. clean house. <laughs> a lot of times we sweep things under the rug of life. We turn the other cheek until we have no cheeks left. The Lord is God. But God is asking us to get it right. God is saying, if you'll just go and open the windows of your physical home, open the windows and the doors, and let that nice breeze come in, that refreshing come in, yes. imagine that and apply that in the spirit realm. We need to go home and we need to get prepared. We're in a new season already. And it's up to us what we're going to, what we're going to experience in this season. I am ready to see 
some people walk in the miracle working power of God. People whose lives and health have been given up by medical science yeah. that are in a situation right now on the top of our prayer list to see a creative miracle happen. And that's not going to happen. Jesus said, a lot of these things that you're praying and standing against, they're not going to happen any other way. It's not going to happen without prayer and fasting. Yeah. It's not, And you can't even effectively pray, or pray and fast if you haven't returned to the Lord with your devotion, your commitment, your urgency, your motivation, yes. Yes. your reason. Your reason. I want to make a difference in the lives of people. Amen. 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 Beginning with those in my, under my own roof. Yes. Hallelujah. I like your verse 2. After two days, He will revive us. He will quicken us. He will give us life. And on the third day, He will raise us up. He will raise us up. There is a lifting up. And there's a Holy Ghost lifting up right now in our lives. There's such an encouragement by the Lord who is telling us it's going to be okay. You didn't miss it. You're not missing it now. You are right on track. Why do you think you've been able to be sustained? Why do you think your family didn't get so defeated and overblown? And they look like they're going through some stuff. Good. Yes. I want to see that my kids are going through a shaking in their lives. Yes. When my kids are doing real good, something's up. Something's up. When my kids don't come to me with some prayerful need, something's wrong. Because when they're pleasing God, yeah. when they're doing right, there's a little bit of trouble somewhere. The enemy's going to try to knock them down, get their eyes off. And, and every time they start to do good, here comes the enemy to try to work something. And that's all right. We're not threatened by the threat of attack. Right. Right. Amen. A lot of people won't engage in, in a level of intercessory prayer or a level of commitment or devotion because it's going to take something. It's going to require something. It's going to require you to get in there and, and be serious about your walk with God. Be serious about this faith confession that we're making. Yes. Put some fruit behind our hallelujahs. Yes. 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 Amen. Show some evidence. We're praising the Lord, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. But we don't have a lifestyle that's reflective of that to the fullest. Whoa, There's yes. still a little bit more we can do. A little bit more we can do and apply. And that's a good kind of pressure. That's a God kind of pressure I want. The God kind of pressure that moves me on and encourages me on to leave some things behind and, and say, yes, Lord, tear those things out of my life that are going to hold me back. Tear the people out of my life that I'm consumed with have to make it through and have to get their breakthrough and, and all these other things. Lord, only you can deal with some of these situations and people. And that's not a selfish thing. That's not a something that we need to, to feel that we're being selfish with our prayer time. We don't want to deal with this. That's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need to turn some issues over to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us are at that place because I know I am. I know I am. There's no other way you're going to be able to move on to the next level of progress. If it's not done that way, you cannot carry all these things and juggle all these things and organize and troubleshoot all these things. That's a, a direct attack of the enemy. It's a trick of the enemy. It's a scheme. He's conniving. It is the will of God that you take those prayer needs and prayer requests and circumstances, not just in your life, but in other people's lives, and give them to the Lord. Don't forget, at the end of the day, to check yourself and make sure you have cast all your cares Amen. upon the Lord. Yes. Cast the whole of that care upon the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you I thank you that we can cast the whole of our cares over to you. You care for us. You perfect what concerns us, Father. We thank you in the name of Jesus that you enable us and you equip us. You bring us to a place of glory, Father. We can go from glory to glory in you, Father. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Our whole household is saved. We thank you, Father, that we can come before you and know that if we pray, you hear. And if you hear, you answer. We call our faith sharpened today in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that you are the God of creative miracles. And we call upon that excellent anointing of the healing presence of your name over our loved ones, over our own health, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that your hand is upon us for good. You command your blessing upon us in every